welcome students so we were talking about the liquidity ratios and in my previous part of discussion i uh, discussed with you that uh, how we calculate the current ratio and what is the meaning of it and what is the relevance of the current ratio as far as the liquidity uh, management is concerned and the first ratio which is uh, 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 we calculate that is by taking the total current assets divided by the total current liabilities and uh, as I told you that the rule of thumb of this ratio is 1.33 is to 1. So, uh, normally what happens that say uh, why it is 1.33 is to 1 earlier the rule of thumb was 2 is to 1 current ratio the rule of thumb was 2 is to 1 uh, and now it is revised rule is 1.33 is to 1. So, why it has been revised and why it has been lowered down? The I will discuss with you just for 2 minutes the background of lowering the ratio. Uh, now, it is acceptable, acceptable ratio is 1.33 is to 1, earlier this ratio was 2 is to 1. So, uh, see when uh, we talk about the current assets, because current ratio is the current assets divided by the current liability, C A is divided by the C L that is a total current assets divided by the total current liabilities. So, current assets are 2 times of the current liabilities if the ratio is 2 is to 1 and current assets are expected to be 1.33 is to 1 when the current ratio is 1.33 is to 1. <coughs> so, in this situation why uh, the ratio has been lowered down? The ratio is which is acceptable now is 1.33 is to 1. Earlier what was the situation that uh, when we are required to keep the ratio, when the industry is required to keep the ratio 2 is to 1, it means the current asset should be equal to the means 2 times of the current liabilities. And when you talk about the current assets, what are the current assets? Say we start with inventory. In the balance sheet, you say it is inventory, then there are the debtors, then there are the bills receivables, then there are the say, uh, say uh, marketable securities then there are the say prepaid expenses, prepaid expenses and then is the cash. And when uh, we are expecting the ratio to be 2 is to 1, it means we are expecting the firm, the industry to maintain this level of current assets as double of the current liabilities. But it is very expensive to maintain the high level of current assets very very expensive and no firm can afford to keep high amount of the current assets. We call them these are the assets, we call them these are the assets, inventory is asset, debtors are the assets, bills receivables are assets, marketable securities are assets, prepaid expenses are asset and cash is also asset. But and if you say, if you talk about these assets, you look at the lower part of the balance sheet. If you look at the lower part of the balance sheet, here we have the current assets and current assets are interest, accrued on investments, inventory, sundry debtors, cash, loans and advances. These all are the current assets. Now, though these assets are called, current assets are called as assets, they are assets. But in the real sense, if I am a businessman, and if I am given a chance not to keep any amount of the current assets in my balance sheet or in my concern, I would be the happiest person. Why? Because current assets only have a cost, no returns. They only have a cost, no returns. They do not help any, means the firm to earn any return on this investment in the current assets. So, when there is no return on these current assets, why should one keep the current assets in the balance sheet? Now, for example, how, why there is no return? Say, for example, we talk about the inventory. When we keep the inventory in the firm, we keep the inventory because you cannot sell everything in the market whatever we produce. Part of our production compulsorily remains unsellable because we keep on producing the production process is continuous one. We cannot stop the production process that okay, I have already produced a lot and first I will sell that in the market and then uh, again I will resume the production. That is not possible. You have to continuously produce the production processes to go on, plant cannot be stopped. But at the same time, everything cannot go to the market. 
means we would like to have a symbiosis kind that say raw material is straight away coming from the supply or supplier or supplier's place, a truckload of the raw material is coming straight away it is going to the plant, in the plant we are converting that into the finished product and finished product from the plant itself 100 percent finished product is going to the market and nothing to come coming to uh, the bare house as the finished goods, we are not required to keep any inventory of the finished goods and everything is straight away from the plant is going to the market. So, it means I am not keeping any inventory of raw material, I am not keeping any inventory of the work in process and I am not keeping any inventory of the finished goods. So, I am the safest one because when you keep inventory of raw material, you have the cost of maintaining that inventory, you have the cost of go down, you have the cost of people who are looking after that inventory, you have the cost of say uh, the go down, the space, the building, the human resources. So, maintaining and managing inventory only has a cost. And Inventory, when you talk about the returns, it has no returns, means only you will be selling that in the market. So, you sell this inventory today in the market, you sell after 3 months in the market, it is going to give you the same price. Sometime when you sell today's inventory, when you sell after 3 months in the market, you get less returns on that, you get less returns on that. Maybe sometime the price may come down or maybe because of the obsolescence quality may be uh, getting uh, deteriorated or anything may be possible. So, returns are going to be maximum what you are going to get today you are going to get after 3 months and if the price falls down because of the obsolescence quality of that finished goods go down, packaging gets disturbed then sometimes the price will go down. So, price is going to remain the same or is going to get reduced, but cost is going to increase because maintaining inventory has a cost. You must be knowing about that inventory has three kind of the costs. First is the say holding cost, then is the uh, stock out cost and then we have the uh, say you can call it as a uh, carrying cost, carrying or the holding cost, then the say stock out cost and then we have the say managing cost of the inventory itself has a cost. So, it means you have the cost only in the inventory returns, no extra returns are available. So, if I am given a chance to not to keep the inventory of raw material or the finished goods, then I would be the happiest person. So, why should I keep inventory? It has a cost only, no extra returns. Similarly, you talk about the debtors. Who are the debtors? When the debtors exist in the balance sheet? Debtors only exist in the balance sheet when we sell them on credit. And as a true businessman, would I like to sell my production or production in my factory, in my unit on credit in the market? Why should I do that? I would be the happiest person if allowed to sell everything on cash, but that is not possible because you cannot sell everything, total production in the market on the cash basis. Part of the production has to go to the market on credit basis, so debtors come up in the balance sheet. We call these debtors as asset. But I think I will be the last person who would like to have even not even like to have not even iota of the debtors, no debtors, I do not want to sell on credit. And the firms who are having that commanding position in the market, they do not sell anything on the credit, they do not sell anything on the credit, they sell everything on the cash. Most of the MNCs who are operating in India, for example, you talk about the Samsung. Now, Samsung is having good market for their product. So, largely they are selling their products, they are passing it on to the dealers and dealers are to get it on cash from Samsung. Because Samsung has a market, Samsung has a demand for the product, why Samsung should give the credit to the dealer? Similarly, you talk about the car manufacturing companies. Car manufacturing companies when they sell the cars to the dealers, normally these cars are sold on cash. They have to send a draft along with the total demand note, they have to send the draft of that total amount. And once the company receives the draft and the payment, then a truckload of cars is sent. So, if you have a good demand for your product in the market, if you have a good market for your product, then there is no issue. You can even sell everything on cash, you can refuse to sell on credit. But if there is a problem and you see that today we are in a competitive economy, we are in a competitive era. When we are in a highly competitive economy, because the effect of liberalization is that after the liberalization of Indian economy, one thing is has happened that it has improved the supply side. Once it has improved, improved the supply side, it means competition has intensified. 
When the competition has intensified it means today there is not only one manufacturer who is selling the one product in the market, there are the multiple suppliers who are say manufacturing and selling that product in the market. So, if the one is not selling on credit other will sell. So, when the competition has increased, supply side has improved, now people have lot of options available. So, it means the companies, the manufacturers are bound to sell on credit. Earlier in the Indian market say for example, you talk about the electronics industry. Uh, there were so many people manufacturing CTVs and uh, other electronic products, but leading uh, names were only two in the market. One was Anida, second was Videocon. So, Onida having the best name in the market at that time till 98, 99 or maximum till 2000, they were considered as the best product in the market and Onida was selling the costliest color TV in the market and largely their, their, their almost uh, say large part of the transactions were on cash, nothing on credit. But when this multinational Samsung, LG, Sony came up to Indian market, now these companies are wiped out of the Indian market. They are not existing in the Indian market. They are, they are disappeared from the Indian market. Today nobody buys Onida TV, though the TV is existing in the market. Today nobody buys the Videocon TV, though the TV is existing in the market. So, Onida and Videocon today because of the improved supply side, because of intensified competition, because of having a better product in the market, they have to compulsorily sell their product on credit. And most of their sales, 80 percent of their sales are on credit and because of the sales debtors come up. So, you see when debtors are there, are these debtors going to earn anything for this firm? Only firms, funds are blocked in these credit sales. And whatever the amount of funds are blocked in the credit sales, they have to arrange for those funds from the other sources and their cost increases. But when you sell this product in the market, creditors means debtors who have bought it on credit, they are going to pay after 2 months or 45 days. They are going to, okay, they are going to pay something extra like the, for the interest part, but sometime or most of the time part of the credit sales are not recovered also and they are called as bad debts. They are called as bad debts. So, bad debts are also there which means when you are creating the debtors in the balance sheet, debtors only have a cost, they do not have no returns, they do not have any returns, only cost. So, we have to be careful that we should sell as low as possible on the credit and our maximum sales should be on cash, but that is not possible because we have to sell it on credit. At the same time, the firms who are selling on credit, they also buy on credit. Their raw material comes on credit. We see that bills payable are there. The bills payable or sundry creditors are what? They are the suppliers accounts who have supplied to the firm on credit. So, debtors burden is being balanced by creating the creditors in the balance sheet that if the firm is bound to sell the product on credit, finished product on the credit, they are also entitled to have the credit from their suppliers. So, this is a symbiosis which keeps on working, but as a, as, as a, as a businessman, if I am given a chance to sell my product in the market, I would love to sell everything on cash and nothing on credit and if that, that happens, debtors will not exist in the balance sheet and my cost will go down. Similarly, you talk about the bills receivable, almost the same thing. Then you talk about the, we will uh, discuss marketable securities later on, we talk about the prepaid expenses. Would you like to pay for anything in advance? Why should I pay for anything in advance? If my electricity bill is becoming due after 30 days, I should pay it after the due date, not before the due date, means on the due date, not before the due date. Similarly, if I am getting some raw material, I am buying some raw material from some source, I would like to pay to that source for the raw material only after receiving the material, but not before receiving the material. But if the material is of that kind of, means that nature, which material is of that nature, which is scarce in supply. So, to ensure my supply, I would have to make advance payments. I have to make advance payments to the source, uh, so that my supply of the raw material is assured. So, when I make the advance payments, Am I getting some discount on that? I am not getting. So, why should I pay in advance? Rather it has a cost, no returns. Similarly, you talk about the cash. You keep cash in hand or you keep cash at bank. In both the cases, it is going to 
cause you the cost, no returns. Cash in hand earns nothing for us and cash or bank also does not give any returns to the business. It is a current account in the bank not savings account and current account does not earn any interest for the business only savings account earns and that too very nominal only 4 percent. So, I also would not like to keep cash beyond a particular level. So, it means all these current assets are causing the cost they are not helping anything to earn extra revenue. So, I would like to keep either 0 amount of current assets or minimum amount of current assets or maximum the amount of current asset I would like to keep is that amount which is called as optimum amount of current asset. And to fund these current assets, I would like to have sufficient current liabilities with me so that my own investment in the business is very, very less. So, if you are required to keep the double amount of current assets as compared to current liabilities, you think how much your cost is going to go up. And you see that when it was a closed economy, India was a closed economy, then competition was not that much. So, at that time we were ignoring the financial cost. We were not bothering about how much is the financial cost for us. We were only talking about the production cost, we were only talking about the marketing cost, we were only talking about the distribution and sales and advertising cost. But we had the financial cost, but we were, we were not careful about the financial cost. But if you today keep more funds blocked in the current assets by keeping double amount of the current assets against the current liabilities, then your investment in the current assets is going to go up and that investment is, 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 is costly. And if you, if you invest extra here, your cost increases, your returns will get affected because these current assets are current assets. We are kept only for months, not for years. So, if you save even a single penny here, that will reflect into the increased profits. If you invest extra money here, that will also reflect into the increased cost. So, it means nothing extra should be kept here and that is why the current ratio is brought down. Actually, why this 1.33 current ratio is important? This current ratio is important only, only and only if any firm has to go for seeking the short term finance from the banks. This is, this is the requirement of the banks, this is not the requirement of anybody else. There are many companies in the market who are keeping current assets less than the current liabilities and they are running the show with the negative working capital. But if we are to go for financing our inventory, we borrow money from the banks, we for financing our debtors, we borrow money from the banks. For making the prepaid expenses be borrow money from the banks and sometimes even the cash is also the borrowed cash. And that bank finance comes in the three forms in India. One is cash credit limit, another is the working capital loan, third is the discounting of the credit sale bills. So, when you have to go to the bank and, in, and, and I would like to share with you that in India most of the short term finance, most of the working capital finance in the Indian concerns comes from the banks in India. We have 10, 12 sources of uh, say short term finance or the working capital finance. We have bank finance, we have uh, uh, public deposits, we have intercorporate deposits, we have factoring, we have commercial paper, we have derivatives. But Hardly these sources are of any use in India as far as the working capital finance is concerned. Most of the requirements for fulfilling the requirements of working capital finance, they are fulfilled through the bank finance. Now, when we go to the bank and seek the working capital of the short term finance from the banks, bank would like to make sure that yes, we are ready to give you the short term finance, but we would like to make sure that your firm is maintaining sufficient liquidity sufficient liquidity and for that they demand that your current ratio earlier they were demanding that the current ratio sh should be 2 is to 1. You have to keep 2 times of the current assets as compared to the current liabilities so that even part of the current assets are not convertible into cash immediately. Even you have sufficient amount of current assets remaining assets sufficient amount of the current assets are there that the firm is maintaining liquidity and firm will be making the payment of their finance returning it 
as and when it becomes due that is the principal as well as interest. But if there is a liquidity problem with the firm because they are maintaining very low level of current assets and part of the current asset for example inventory does not become convertible into cash, sometimes debtors also are not convertible into cash. Similarly, <coughs> marketable securities are also not easily convertible into cash, then you have left with the cash and prepaid expenses are means less liquid. So, it means and if your cash amount is less available with you, other assets are not convertible into cash even though the firm wants to make the payment back to the bank on time, but firm does not have the liquidity. So, bank wants that there should be a cushion in terms of the extra current assets and that is why it was required to keep the current ratio 2 is to 1. But now, because as I told you after liberalization when the competition has intensified, many multinational companies have entered the Indian market and now for Indian companies also it is tough to compete in such a competing environment. So, now they have also realized that even the finance also has a cost. And if they are keeping more amount of the current assets in their balance sheet, it means their financial cost is going to go up. So, they requested to the banks that we should be allowed to bring down the level of current assets so that we can manage our financial cost properly. And here now that is why the current ratio has been allowed by the banks to be brought down from the 2 is to 1 level to the 1.33 is to 1. So, that still there is a cushion by one third of the level of current assets. They have 33 percent current assets more than the current liabilities. So, that even part of the current assets number one because all the current liabilities are not becoming due to be paid on the same date and same time. It means only some of them will become due one. Second thing is if even one third of the current assets are more than the current liabilities, it means even some of the current assets are not convertible into cash, still bank firm has sufficient current assets which are convert easily convertible into cash, either they are in the cash form or they are convertible into cash. So, it means the liquidity problem is solved and the firm has sufficient liquidity all the times and the bank can be assured that your funds will be paid back to you as and when they become due. So, they have agreed that okay, not 2 is to 1, but still you have to keep a positive current ratio and that positive extent is 1.33 is to 1. You have to maintain the level of current ratio at the level of 1.33 is to 1. So, but if you do not need to go to the bank, if you do not require any working capital from the bank, if you do not need any short term financial support from the bank, then this current ratio is not the mandatory requirement. You can even keep 0.5 is to 1 as the current ratio, no problem. But then we have to be careful that when we keep the current ratio very low, then the firm has to be very careful that as and when the short term liabilities become due to be paid, there should be sufficient liquidity. So, they have to maintain the liquidity though they can maintain a negative current ratio, but they should not be default on the account of making the payment of the current liabilities as and when they become due. Because if the firm is not able to make the payment on due date, then that situation is called as technical insolvency, insolvency of the firm. Firm is not insolvent, but technically the firm is insolvent because they are not able to pay for their current liabilities on the due date. So, that is a very important issue. So, you maintain any ratio if you do not want to go to the bank, but you care, be careful that your payments are made on time and you have sufficient amount of cash, you have sufficient amount of liquidity. So, this is the current ratio, importance of the current ratio. So, now the background is earlier it was 2 is to 1, but because of intensified competition, now we are allowed to bring this ratio down and the ratio up to 1.33 is also acceptable and by keeping 33 percent extra current assets, the show can be run. So, we have discussed the current ratio, uh, current means uh, in the, my previous part of discussion, we have calculated the current ratio for the Gresham industries. And we found that the current ratio in case of the Gresham industries was somewhere around 1.25. So, this is not a very high amount of the current ratio and we have found it that they are able to maintain the current ratio at this level less than 1.33 because they are hardly going to the bank. If you look at this, they have the short term borrowings, they have taken the short term borrowings, but 
overall the company's position is so good that it may not be simply the bank finance, it may be from other sources. So, if they are using the other sources, they are not good, they should not specified in the balance sheet that they have the bank borrowings. So, when they do not have the bank borrowings, if you look at the current liabilities, current liabilities amount is say 1266.86 crores and it is mentioned in the additional information given here that uh, secure loans include short term debt that is 331.2 and unsecured is 75.51. So, one reason could be that it is not a bank finance and even if it is a bank finance then maybe the bank has permitted them to keep the ratio less than 1.33 because their overall performance is very good excellent. So, it means still it is a positive ratio though not, though not 1.33 to 1, but normally if a normal firm not like this, uh, but not having the sound financial position like this, but if a normal firm has to go to the market and means go to the banks for raising the working capital finance, in that case they will have to maintain the current ratio 1.33 is to 1. Now, we will calculate the other ratios for Grassim industries and if you calculate the ratios for the Grassim industries, the other ratios, other liquidity ratios, say for example, the next ratio is the quick ratio, quick ratio, this is the quick ratio. So, if you calculate, means you have to calculate the quick ratio for the Grassim industries and in my previous discussion, I told you that the formula for calculating the quick ratio is current assets minus inventory, current assets minus inventories divided by the current liabilities. This was the formula I discussed with you in my last part of discussion, but it can be further more refined. Further more refined could be that in the denominator also we can make some change and here you can take that current assets minus inventories divided by the current liabilities plus short term debt plus uh, uh, current liabilities though we when we are we were writing when the short term debt we are writing here the current liabilities in please it means we are including everything we are including the short term debt also but sometimes for a further refinement of this ratio has been done recently and i would like to make some you may say what we discussed earlier i would like to share with you that you can correct this ratio and calculate by this way that in the denominator you can take that is a current liabilities plus short term loan net of working capital limit, net of working capital limit. Short term debt only with include that short term debt which is a borrowed money, not a working capital limit. If some company is having a cash credit limit, then that limit is not considered as a current liability. Because there in the working capital limit in the CC limit, we keep on, I will discuss with you the CC limit also that in the next part of discussion, but in the CC limit, it is not a boring kind of, only it happens on the continuous basis that whenever you need funds, you borrow from that account, but whenever you get surplus means you get the sales collection, you deposit the funds back into that account. That is the CC limit account or the working capital limit account. So, that much. Uh, part should be subtracted from the short term debt because there we withdraw also next day we deposit also withdraw also deposit also withdraw also deposit also. So, it means that is not a loan that it will become due to be paid after 3 months or after 6 months and then then we should have to have the liquidity no we are withdrawing also we are depositing also withdrawing also depositing also. So, in that situation that amount should be subtracted. So, we are writing here current liabilities plus short term loan net of the working capital limit and if any working capital limit is being used that from the short term debt that much of the amount should be reduced. So, this is the formula of calculating the quick ratio. So, in this case if we talk about the uh, quick ratio here we will say that what is the level of the current assets we have seen earlier and the level of current asset was 2342.39 minus inventory and inventory is amount is 824.39. 1 4 we have to subtract that and in the denominator we have the total amount of the current liabilities is how much uh, 1 2 6 6. So, total is plus provision. So, it is 1 4 5 0 point 0 6 this is amount of the current liabilities right this is amount of current liabilities and in this we have for calculating the current ratio we added the 
amount that is 406.71 crores that was added as the uh, say short term debt. But if the short term debt part of means that part of the short term debt which is through uh, working capital limit should be subtracted. So, let us see is there any amount as a working capital limit we are using. So, it is given here in the additional information that uh, all short term debts represent working capital borrowings all short term debts represent the working capital borrowings. It means we have not to take the short term debt into account here. So, only current liabilities will be taking in the denominator and if you take the current liabilities in the denominator this works out as 1450.06 and if you calculate this, this works out as 1.05 times for the year 2007 and if you talk about the previous year, this ratio is 1 is to 1. So, it is 1.505 times is to 1 and for the previous year it is 1 is to 1. So, now this ratio as I told you that the rule of thumb is that for the quick ratio the rule of thumb is that it should be 1 is to 1 and in both the cases it is nearer to the 1 is to 1. Remaining liquidity ratios I will talk to you in the next part of discussion. Thank you very much.